beautifully poised at the engine now. 1-0 on the night for Fluminense over Boca. 1-1 on aggregate. Both with a home goal to the name. Zacco Carletto's awkwardly struck free kick giving Fluminense the advantage this evening. was difficult and it was one that Agustin Orion just ultimately couldn't deal with the trajectory was so unnatural he stretched but he could not reach so do Boca restructure things for the second half or do they stay as is be a case of Fluminense continuing to pile on so much pressure in the second half and Boca trying to get over the line and force the game to penalties. Of course, if they do find the net and get an away goal, Boca, then Fluminense will have to get two more. Bad ball being put through was a decent old chase by Santiago Silva. He's the Uruguayan who's played in Uruguay and Argentina and Brazil before popping over for decent spells in Germany and Portugal. Movement for the corner, but this time no execution. Rolando Schiavi well placed at the back post. And it's a warning for Fluminense. Well, Gvitinic was the original focus, and he was literally given the eyes. Well, not literally, literally. It's up by Thiago Carletto. Who had earlier tried to send Tarek Vitinic into a trance. quarter-final action in the Copa do Brasil tonight, by the way. Palmeiras nil, Atletico Paranense nil on the night. 2-2 two, two in aggregate. Palmeiras have the away goals. Rice against Sao Paulo and Cortiba against Vitoria are late. Controlled by Clemente Rodriguez, who has support if needed. Thiago Neves back on the field. Both 11s have been retained. He has run off the leg trouble that saw him leave the pitch for a few minutes in the first half. Didn't eat up a lot of time because there wasn't much stoppage time at the end of it. The ball through was very inviting. Too sudden to be a back pass. Too strenuous to be a fair winning tackle. On 
purpose. Well, he's been put through the ringer tonight. Mario Vitinic. Found himself going through the barrier. Fighting ball throw, and it was almost the case of Rodriguez and Silva linking up. Usual wonderful break down the left-hand side from the Argentine international. Burton is back in the Fluminense defence, and how important that is. Edgar Cavalieri will remain alert. So many excellent saves last week in the away leg. Again, it's a really decent flick in by Raquel May from the corner kick. Israel Day arriving in the middle. Another corner. Well, they've pepped up, presumably, some home truths at half time. Not been much uncertainty in the Fluminense defence so far, but now suddenly it's arriving. Good push away by Cavalieri. And he's earned the free kick strenuously. Stretched across strongly. Important stop. It's nine games to date. It's only conceded five goals, and it's through abilities like that, which weren't seen very regularly during his season in Europe. And Santiago Silva took it and reacted too quickly. Well, that'll make Falcione even more do it. Look like a man you'd want to upset, really. Head on by Chago Neves. There's Clemente Rodriguez in the way for Boca. Jan with the touch on. Kelme got stuck in. Daggers at Edinho. It's bubbling nicely. on by Thiago Carlito, the goal scorer. Quite a remarkable one. The distance we've seen before, but the 
and there's somewhat cruelty on Boca of the trajectory and the way in. Now you have Kvitinic offside, Boca's first of the game. Rebel Draga may be feeling his men should be getting to try and put this tie to bed maybe, but instead they find themselves on the back foot suddenly. Tago Neves went high with a little slap on Christian Neves. That'll sting. Chago Carlito again. The claim by Raquel May and a very good win. has had very few opportunities in which to stretch his legs so far in the game. Quality by Goom. But not what followed. Bocca's free kick. And there may be a few not-so-free kicks which are set to follow. Silver clipped. enough I suppose it's a bit of over baking definitely of service this time. Six Libertadores titles for Boca, which translated into three successes in Intercontinental Cups. of those against Borussia Mönchengladbach who took the place of Liverpool who didn't want to play in 77 it's happened quite a bit with English sides back then I remember Forrest pulling out of one as well Jan's build up play finally he's got into the game Managed to slip past three. And Jean again. Beginning to make the game his. Caleto. It hung neatly, but perfect for Orlando Schiavi. considered important for the World Cup qualifying series under Diego Maradona. Time's different now. Current set of qualifiers resume next week. The two Warriors helping each other out. Nevis lost the run of it and Silva wouldn't let him down and wallow in his own misery, even though it might have been to his own personal gain. Silva wants Neves back in his feet so he can put him squarely on his back. The scourge of South American football returns. I can't say I've ever worked in a game in which a laser pen has caused the goal. But the fourth official, Patricio Polis, is going to have a word with the local police behind the goal. They're banned in some countries because a few bright sparks decided to. them and release them at planes that were landing. Important job for Rodriguez to try and cut the angle 
He didn't. Bruno has managed to get the cross in anyway and almost found Thiago Neves. Rafael Suvic. Thiago Carletto. What a strange stride. It looked as if he was limping. He's down. Also down, Rafael Sobis. Slowly getting through to Tago Carletto has recovered from his pain. Try and inflict some more on Boca. No touch would come. Up in the air by Voltra Vitti. And helped away by Silva. Right towards Thiago Neves again. It's a really good ball inside. And it should have been put home by Rafael Sobis. It was a glorious chance. And it should have been put home. Rafael Sobis will not have a better chance to score all game. And I'm pretty sure in that replay I saw a flash of green again towards the goalkeeper. But what a glorious ball in by Thiago Neves. It was right down the throat of the pocket of fence and they almost did choke. precarious for Fluminense here because even if they go 2-0 up uh, a goal back by Boca would again put the Argentine Giants through on the away goals rule Thiago Carletto is not taking it on the right blade of grass insolent little boy Good work by Rafael Mora. Rancaglia inside. Well defended. But the flu hats are raising again. And with very good reason. Orion has punched away, not successfully. Goom back in. And the whistle was very swift. Sure, a foul's been called. Not offside. The drag on Vitanic. Rafael Mora was doing the drag back and was on Insoralde. And that was a very, very good spot by Enrique Osis. Maybe over Fussy. But he has generally got the big decisions right. And they have not been easy ones. Realistically, it doesn't matter how wonderful you referee a game, someone always going to complain at you. Something that I'm sure they've acknowledged and become as comfortable with as possible. Long time ago. On by Wagner. The back heels like that work, they're brilliant. That one didn't work. Big opening, and Vitti's open the door. Push back, Rivero's in there. 
Riquelme played his part, but Bruno has managed to get it away, and what's more, he's won a throw. It is constantly red alert time for Fluminense when Boca enter the final third. Because a concession now, and they'd have only 25 minutes to score two. They did win at the Bombonera during the group stage. Boca finally found their feet, came here and won towards the end of the pool rounds and held their own at home in Buenos Aires last week. Seemed to come off an elbow. And that's cold as a dive. And it's going to be a yellow card for John. Stumbled first over the foot of Clemente Rodriguez, invited the challenge, then into Alde. Still have something to celebrate. Tie which, as of now, with 25 minutes remaining. It's looking like penalties, especially if we're going to continue having offsides like this. It's a lot of space, a lot of room on this near side. You have to put that down as a glorious chance which went a begging for Bucket. Still nil nil in the Brazilian Cup, by the way. Palmeiras nil, Atletico Parense nil, 2 2 in aggregate. Palmeiras with the away goals. Vitanich. Screaming for it on the far side is Clemente Rodriguez. Silva in his usual position on the edge of the area. And Thiago Neves, who won so many free kicks for Fluminense in the first half, has now given one away in a similar position with the somewhat lazy shove in Diego Rivera. And the man who scored the winning goal last week at La Bombonera has been unleashed. Paolo Musche is on. Vitanich is off. Time for Boca to bear their teeth. Riquelme over it. Seven to aim for really good strong delivery. The back header by Rafa Mora. And for a spell, didn't know the direction it was heading in. But happily for him and Diego Cavalieri, it's out for the corner. Cavalieri is not enjoying the pressure being put on him for this corner. Delivery good. An instant chance to improve on it. That was a good header away by Rafa Mora. in and it was a firm head away this time by Edinho who's put that opportunity to bed Mouche scored nine goals in 43 games between league and Libertadores this season some of the ones he's got have been pretty vital Mente Rodriguez did enough but now he's out of position and what a horrible waste Chago Neves did not anticipate that coming, and you have to argue he was right not to. It would have needed pure telepathy between him and Rafael Sobis to know the ball was going to be thrown there. 
maybe walk into a door once, repeatedly. Quite a number of decisions in the tie which have not gone Fluminense's way at all. Fighting through ball, scuffed away by Jean. Here, former Sao Paulo colleague of Thiago Carleto. Like the goal scorer, his move is permanent. Mikelme. Which has had a couple of touches since coming on. And under the nose of the referee. Carletto has gone down and has got the wagging finger and wasn't caught in the face and that is shameful play acting but you know what, it is really good refereeing didn't brandish a red to Schiavi didn't pull out a yellow against Carletto. A finger, a few words, and it's all calm again. And he has generally impressed me in the game. Schiavi has given away a free kick here, though, for the foul on Thiago Neves, and it's central. And it's one of potential. Ganso really wanted to take but has been sent inside instead by Thiago Carleto as the delivery is excellent right down the middle Wagner's down well the challenge by Riquelme how strong a brushing off of Wagner was it was a, a palm off if you like but if it's a red card here it would be very very unfortunate it's a free kick and it is only a free kick and you know what that's probably fair enough Wellington name is being ready, the Brazilian under-17 international. Newcomer of the year last year. And again hit in with a nice amount of power by Thiago Carleta. He's caused palpitations in the bucket defence every time he sent one of those free kicks in. In by Rafael Sobis. Goal kick. Chaosis may be the focus of Brazilian television. For not even showing Raquel May a, a finger, let alone a, a yellow or red card. But there was no elbow in the face. It was a foul, and he pushed away in the shoulder and then it straight into the face, but there was, there was no damage done. Really, from both sides, there's been no histrionics either. We hear a lot that South America is a wild bear pit, but you compare this to the English Premier League and you tell me which is which. Here goes Thiago Neves.
And there goes his balance of body and mind. It's Wagner going off. Wagner gets the boot. Wellington will be the one making sweet music now. seen our fair share of dubious refereeing in this competition and the Sudamericana in the five seasons we've been lucky enough to bring it to you but a lot of the refereeing displays have been truly magnificent and this one joins it foul by Thiago Carletta the flag from Francisco Mondria and there was a shot tug and that was enough on Pablo Moshe Three goals in the competition this season to Max Riquelme. Fifteen minutes. And if there's no further addition, it's penalties. Riquelme yet again with the responsibility. The burden of which he always bears so well. But can he find a moving body? Punched away by Cavalieri. And he was being troubled too by a laser pen somewhere else in the stadium. It's not as if it's full tonight and it should be easy to pick these people out. Think Brazilian police against one of the big two Argentine clubs wouldn't be too pushed. Schiavi comfortably cleared. It's a player of good style. I feel so is the upended party. Well, there may not be anyone from Boca. There is talk of Raquel May ending his international retirement soon if Argentina need him. They do have Aguero, Higuain, Levetzi and Messi available for Ecuador and Brazil in the next couple of weeks. Latter game is a friendly. Caleto crosses good, very inviting. And Orion was given a, a hall pass to dive on that. No pressure applied. Not sure if you can ever call Argentina Brazil a friendly. Nervous stood firm in a game which has largely passed them by. Juan Sanchez Mino is about to be called for, the 22 year old midfielder. Now he's got some key goals, including here in the group stages, to help the 2 0 victory. Also scored in the early stages against Arsenal de Sarandi. Silva with the snapshot. Cavalieri with the relieved scramble across goal.
effort was very cheeky, but it wasn't enough to catch Cavalieri out. Can he find a way past this time? Silva rebounding it off Anderson. While a lot of the Boca squad have come through the ranks, have come from other decent Argentine clubs, the generation of Fluminense players being built by Abel Braga have come from largely middling Brazilian clubs. Juan Sanchez Mina has made his arrival on now. Christian Erbis departing the scene. Uh, missed that important block a few minutes ago. A Chelton win the free kick. Silva didn't get the second bite that he so desired. Fluminense moving on. Ten minutes to avoid penalties. On by Wellington there. Chago Nevis. ball for Carlito and that's clever and it's Thiago Neves oh that's really really vicious Orion dealt so well with it a real tale of the unexpected that cross and there may be more on the way Rafa Sobis chance blocked wide stuck out for the corner by Schiavi and that's why you always retreat back to your post Got there in time, Orion was beaten. It pinballed about, flag is up, that'll be offside. All stemmed from the really devious cross from Thiago Neves. And that Brazilian TV find the offsides more interesting than the chances. And we get a second look at them all. Was hopeful. It was easy for Cavalieri. Chago Neves recovered from his first half knock. Turning into a Mark Man again. Chaga Carletto, but tonight. Stuck with Moche. Wide for Clemente Rodriguez and Moche. Subtle little drag back, wasn't subtle enough. Enrique also spotted it. And there's going to be a yellow, presumably for the reaction, I would imagine. He's only been on the pitch a few minutes. And he's fallen on the wrong side of Enrique Osis. Well, there was a drag back on Goom. On the pitch. A matter of 15 minutes. Sanchez Mino provided so much since his arrival. It was almost perfect for Thiago Carleto. Will remain in his position down this left-hand side. Santiago Silva almost drove his way through to win it back. Carleto again. Jean. Well, was he taken out by Rancaglia? He certainly thought it. But if it's been a game of 50-50 challenges, then Fluminense haven't got anything near 50% of free kicks.
Well, there was that vicious cross from Thiago Neves, which really tested Orion, and for around a dozen seconds, Boca defence all at sea, fell to the captain, Rafa Mora. He was offside there, but the flag didn't go up immediately. Linesman had him on. Raquel May looking for options. Had to reset his mental clock. Time running out for Boca. Mucha in the air. Bruno immediately claimed the free kick. Well, later tonight, Vasco against Corinthians. That well poised from last week where it finished nil nil in the rain. Turn meeting coming in Sao Paulo in 45 minutes' time. But will we have a bit more action here to keep us enthralled? Between the two games, a really good tie. But might it just finish in a tie and send us the penalties? Mutsik. Good ball wide. Chance. Rodriguez found by Raquel May. Try to pick up Moshe again. Rivero. And Oviti was under pressure and it was too much pressure. Shoved by Wellington name. Combination of him and Rafael Sobis. They just had to make sure. Nice chip from Buenos Aires to Rio. Nice scar across the neck of Rafael Sobis. That looks very fresh. Raquel May will take. Cavalieri poised, but nothing going his way just yet. The aforementioned Argentina Brazil friendly, which comes up in a week and a half's time, won't feature Paolo Enrique Ganso of Santos. He's in action tomorrow against Fellas Sarsfield. Which we will have for you live. Similar story with Una de Chile against Libertad, which is the second tie tomorrow night. Check local listings for details, but wherever you're watching this game, we'll have the Thursday matches in their entirety as they happen. Uh, Ganso needs arthroscopic surgery, but will play against Fellas tomorrow. Two minutes to go, and as much in stoppages. Marcos Junior is ready to come on for Fluminense, their second change of the game. Well, he's a 19-year-old, so surely that can't be a nod towards penalties. Kelme involved. Eviti from Moche. Silva was almost in, but took a mic too long. Rivero. Wide towards Moche, and he'll stay wide too. Scumbled away by Thiago Nevis. Good ball wide. Moche, what can he do with it this time? In the last minute of the 90, 
Good ball in, Silva down. And the reaction you would expect from the referee has come. Try to buy the penalty, he dragged Goom down with him. That looked like a two. So Marcus Junior is coming on and Rafael Sobis has withdrawn. Comes in the final minute. It is an interesting change with penalties lurking. Palmeiras now lead Atletico Panense 2-0 in the Copa de Brazil quarterfinals 4-2 in aggregate. History, penalties have been Boca's friend. Five of their international titles they won from the penalty spot. But maybe they won't need any. Oh, it's off the line, but it's in now, and Silva's won the game. Boca have mugged Fluminense in the 91st minute. It's Silva, but the moment is purely goal. Fluminense are definitely out. The away goal came right at the death. And Fluminense know it's the firing squad for them now. Hit the post, hit Cavalieri, and then Silva hit him. What a strike by Mute. Cavalieri was heroic, but it's a heroic failure. Santiago Silva's got the winner. Second goal of the campaign. And that settles it. It was the threat against Fluminense all game. It's always the preferable task to have the second leg at home. Chasing a 1-0 deficit isn't disastrous, but if you let the away team score, then you will allow fans like those to be celebrating like that. Matthias Kuruzzo will be brought on late for Boca. But it's a late, late winner. Realistically, a late, late leveller that has won it for Bucket. And they can celebrate for a long, long time. International break to come. Matthias Cruzzo is on and Erviti is off. And Fluminense are out. It looked like penalties for a long, long time. And then, wouldn't you just know it, 91st minute, Mouche plows down the right-hand side, managed to hit the post, Cavalieri scrambled it off the line, but it's a Uruguayan who will be the Argentine hero this evening, because he's made a lot of Brazilians very, very sad indeed. It's hero worship for Santiago Silva and Fluminense's chances of a second Libertadores final are over. Just about the last kick of the game. An incredible finish. Boca through either Una de Chile or Libertad in the semi finals now unless Vélez beat Santos tomorrow and the draw will be flipped, so it'll be Boca against Vélez, but we'll worry about that tomorrow night. The only thing Boca care about now is that they are through. Fluminense allowed the late pressure and Cavalieri did everything he could. And even the photographers are coming in for a hard time as you imagine Abel Braga might too.
Fluminense were depleted, they were down five, but Boca have been down four. Gum is down in the mouth. Anderson will have no continuation in this year's competition, and it's just misery and tears for Fluminense. But pure joy for Boca as they've got their win a few minutes early. It didn't go to penalties in the end. It was decided just outside the 90. Final score on the night. Fluminense won. Boca Juniors won. And thanks to Santiago Silva, Boca win 2-1 on aggregate.